Welcome! In this course, we will look at a number of techniques for working with time series data using SQL Server. My name is Kevin Fiesel. I am a Microsoft Data Platform MVP and am a co-founder at Invisage, a company specializing in data analysis and visualization. Throughout this course, we will use built-in functionality to solve a number of business problems with SQL Server. To start, we will learn how SQL Server handles the individual parts which make up a date and translating strings, for example, from CSV files to dates. We will then take advantage of these functions to control the grain of our dates. This includes, for example, downsampling data to an hourly grain for analysis. We will then cover specific business cases around windows of data, including running totals, moving averages, and where date ranges overlap. In this first lesson, we will review some of the basics around date handling in SQL Server. You should already be familiar with the date time and date time to data types. Let's review a few functions which use these date types to make your life easier. First, get date and get UTC date will return a date in local or UTC time respectively as a date time data type. Similarly, sys date time and sys UTC date time return the current time, either local or UTC, as a date time to typed response. In both cases, we get the dates and times we expect. Suppose we don't need an entire date and time, but only want a specific part. For a date like this one, there are a few built-in functions. We can get the year, or the month, or the day. This might not be enough to satisfy us, so we need to take it to the next level. The date part and date name functions give us much more control over our date parts. Date part returns to us the numeric value of the part we want, such as the year. By contrast, date name gives us a string value, important if we want to know the name of the month. These functions can shred a date into a number of component parts. We can get the year, month, and day like the standalone functions. We can also get the day of the year or the day of the week. We can get the week of the year or the ISO week of the year, a format which is used mostly in Europe. We can even go small, getting minutes, seconds, milliseconds, or even down to nanoseconds. Parsing out date parts is not the only useful thing we can do with T-SQL. We can also add and subtract dates with the date add function. For example, suppose we have a day. We can add days to move forward in time or subtract days to move backward in time. We can even chain these function calls together for additional precision. The date diff function allows us to compare the number of units of time between two date or time types. For example, suppose we have a start and end time for a machine. We can easily determine the number of seconds, minutes, or hours elapsed. Be warned that date diff returns an integer and rounds up. Now that we've seen some of the basics of handling date parts, let's jump into a few exercises. <laughs> 